Hi, Blake here. Uh, I wanted to talk about sharing. In particular, I wanted to talk about how you could share your photos and maybe share words and text uh, with respect to astronomy uh, information. I, I did this presentation back in April 2015, uh, but I thought I'd freshen it up. There, there's some new tools and so on, and I've done a, a lot more sort of work uh, lately. When, when I was going through and building this presentation again, I, I was kind of struggling a little bit because I, I want to you know, it's tempting. I want to pitch everybody that I want. I want you to share everything. I want you to blog everything. I want you to put your pictures online and stuff like that. It's partly because I want to look at your photos. I want to see your images. I want to hear about what you're working on, uh, whether casual sorts of things, casual observing or formal scientific things, citizen science and stuff like that. So I'll try not to, you know, pitch it like that or do too much arm twisting. It's really. <laughs> Really what I want to do is to show you what sort of tools are out there that are available and, and talk about some of the pros and cons to each one, some of the feature sets, and you, and you can sort of decide. But but um, uh, uh, I've been blogging for a long time. I've been putting all my astronomy photos uh, out there on the cloud. So, so I've been doing this for a while and it really works for me. This is maybe kind of aimed at are, are new astronomers and new members also, because if you are thinking about going for some sort of cert certificate, uh, one of the RAS certificates um, that we want you to do good logging, keep good notes and, and stuff like that. Um, so that this might help you do that. that. That was part of the reason that I started blogging was to have detailed log notes at my disposal and they were easy to get to. Uh, as a new imager, you you might really want to get your images out in the cloud because um, you want feedback. If you're getting started and, and you want to know how to get better and you want constructive criticism, there's lots of environments where you can do that. You can get feedback from um, like-minded people to get you on a, on a good path. So here we go. Uh, what? So why, why do you want to do this? Again, I don't want to sort of belabor this um, to, too much, but uh, uh, I, I just want to focus on the tools. Uh, and, and also, it's, uh, it was easy for me to sort of get nostalgic during this because I, I think back to when, you know, a family member would come back from a trip and they would share their photos. They'd load up the slide carousel. We'd close the curtains in the living room. We'd watch their show and it was... You know, uh, uh, it, it kind of drew everybody together. Yes, somebody would fall asleep and be snoring, stuff like that. But I, I feel like something's been lost a little bit that a lot of our photos are trapped inside our cameras or trapped inside our hard disks. Okay, again, I, I don't want to go too much down that path. But, but I think it, when we get together or when we have in the past, when we've met up at a meeting, we've talked about what do you do it? What do you do it? Um, and, and maybe we've got a neat photo on our phone. So we show people, I, I shot this photo last week and the person we're showing it to, they go, wow, that's really great. So we're, we're looking for that. We're doing this already. Uh, and then after our meetings, we would often go to the pub and maybe not strictly astronomy discussion there, but a lot of times people were still talking shop and, and talking about what they were doing astronomically and projects they were working on. And again, sharing photos. So we, it's just in our DNA that, that we share um, when, when we go up to the observatory, when the Car Astronomical Observatory reopens, we'll be up there and sharing things and helping each other out and stuff like that. Of course, we have our forums, so we share lots of information there. Um, so we're already doing it, right? That's my point, that we're already sharing. Maybe I don't need to get into why, per se, um, but it... If anything, I feel like not now in this time with, with a worldwide pandemic that we were maybe not uh, in touch as much now. So there's an opportunity to use social tools and communicate, albeit electronically, um, that that's more important now um, than, than ever because we can't get together sort of physically. Um, some might argue this is egotistical, but but uh, I, I don't know, I, to, to me, maybe that, that's not my sort of take on all of this. 
I, I'm interested in what you're doing and I want to see your, your photos. So who's this for? Uh, I think it's for a RASP member. Are, are your family members really that interested in what you do in your astronomy hobby? They might pleasantly nod and acknowledge you and go, oh, that's a lovely picture. But certainly you'll find within RASP members and astronomy friends that there's a lot of interest. And again, people want to know sort of what, what you're doing. Um, so fellow astro uh, uh, amateur astronomers and fellow astronomers and RASC members and so on are, are interested in what you're doing. If you know me, you know I'm into double stars and I'm really interested in double star observing. So if you're looking at double stars, I really want to know about that and how, how you're doing and what you're seeing or what, what you're imaging. What can you share? Well, kind of anything. I'm, I am speaking quite broadly here. I'm not talking about just strictly photos. Uh, but that's a big thing, sh sharing your photos in a good sort of way, a good space. Um, I want to talk about that. But I also want to talk about the words um, that you, you're maybe interested in keeping detailed blog notes for your observations, maybe to, again, go for a certificate application, or you just want to read back your old log notes and see how you've progressed or changed over time. Uh, you can keep sketches uh, as well. I, I do that when I do a sketch, I scan it and then I put it in my blog so I can look at it later. And I do the tricks, you know, flip, flip it or invert the colors so it's white on black and stuff like that. It, uh, in my day job, I'm a computer trainer, I'm a computer technician, a consultant. Um, so I'm used to helping people sort out software and hardware issues and stuff like that. So I'm just wired that way. And consequently, when I'm looking at, at astronomy software or com computer software related to astronomical pursuits or photography software and uh, planetarium applications and stuff like that, I'm critical. I'm always trying to figure out problems in them, um, find solutions, better workflows. So, and I just want to share that with people. So I have a lot of tips and tricks, product reviews, things like that, that I put online. Um, and when I get hot under the collar about something, some silly design in a piece of software, maybe I'll um, be a bit more sort of heavy handed and rant a little bit, but uh, that, that that's what you can do. You can soapbox um, a bit in something like a blog. Um, with words. So, so, and you can do citizen science. Uh, if you're measuring uh, uh, variable stars, you could put your notes there to refer back to them. Uh, I, I keep all my double star measurement notes um, online, uh, the, the raw information and, and all the things I do to go through data reduction. So, you, you can do things like that. Uh, Jeff Garrity, the late Jeff Garrity, he kept his log notes online, uh, and I don't have one open right now, but he would uh, keep fairly brief notes, but he would uh, numerically increase the number, increment each one of his log notes so you can see all of his history. He, he would indicate it was a daytime or nighttime observation. So if you, if you Google that, if you Google Jeff Garrity uh, log or blog, you, you'll find his notes. Paul Markov, our host this evening, he's a big fan of um, blogging. He's got an article in the Rask Observer's Handbook. He encourages that, he promotes that. So, so you, we're, we want people to keep good log notes. We strongly encourage that. You don't have to if you really don't want to. But that, that's what I do. And, and I wanted my log notes to be sort of available anywhere, anytime. So a blog tool really suits that uh, for me. Um, okay, I, I admit I get a little um, uh, uh, terse and uh, <laughs> uh, abrupt maybe with some people about this. Um, I, I'm very opinionated about this. I don't, I don't think in some cases we're using bandwidth effectively. I'm, I'm a big sort of proponent of this that we need to stop using email for huge attachments. That's a broad comment, general sort of comment there. So ideally, in a perfect world, yes, it does maybe take a couple of more steps um, here, but if you have a big, huge file, 
uh, I, I would suggest you put that in a shared place somewhere. You know, simple files, you could put those in Google Drive or in Dropbox or, or something like that. And then, then what I try to do is um, link to the file or use sharing features in that service so people can get to the file and look at it. And more and more, we're, we're doing co-authoring of documents and things like that. You don't want to use Facebook as your sole or primary mechanism for sharing your photos. And that's because Facebook just kills these photos. You've gone to all this trouble, if you're an astrophotographer, you've gone to all this trouble to collect great data, um, do, do your dark subtraction, do your bias um, uh, subtraction, make high quality images, and they're of a very high resolution. And then you put them on Facebook and they, they might look terrible. And maybe you're trying to share them because you, you do, you're pretty proud of your work. You're chuffed and people look at the photo and they go, uh, it doesn't look that great to me. Or there's, there's technical problems, like there's a more uh, effect that appears in the image. So uh, ideally, again, you don't want to put your photos on Facebook. Uh, it, you should put them in a proper photo storage mechanism or facility then you can link to them in Facebook. So people, if they're in a hurry, they can just look at the low resolution image and go, oh, that's nice. Um, but for people that are really interested in, they can follow the link and see the super duper high quality, high resolution one. Then, then they'll go, oh, that's awesome. And, and similarly, a lot of our social services also are uh, transitory. Uh, they're fleeting, for lack of a better word, especially Twitter. Um, that, that if you put things there and that's the sole place where you've uh, shared an image or something like that, it might be really, really hard to track it down later. So if people are trying to find, where is that image that, uh, you know, John Smith took of M33 with the supernova in it? I, I saw it a week ago on Facebook. Good luck finding it. It can be really, really hard tracking those down. Um, so... Yes, there are search mechanisms there and you can put things into galleries um, in some cases, but I think there's just overall, there's a better strategy. I don't think it's efficient. I, I don't think it's a, a, the, the best way to sort of share, share your great astrophotography it, it, through email or other sort of tools there. Use the cloud, um, you, use a social tool, for example, say Flickr, uh, put, put the photo there, then, then it's a win-win. Um, an another thing, if you'll indulge me, is that email is a little pushy. If you send an email with a big, huge photo in it um, to me, may maybe I'm busy. Maybe I'm not interested right now. Um, I might delete it um, uh, if I'm not in a good mood. <laughs> so uh, uh, it, I think if you put things on the cloud and invite people to look at it, it's a softer approach. You're saying, check it out if you've got time, if you're interested in it. There, again, there's bandwidth considerations too if people are in a rural um, location. Uh, and a, a little sidebar to this, of course, is that cameras are getting bigger sensors. They're, they're, uh, the, the, the resolution of cameras, smartphone cameras and DSLRs and CCDs, these are always improving and getting better. So the image files are getting larger and larger all the time. So all, all the more reason why we shouldn't use email. Okay, I'll stop talking about that. I've made my point. Now, how much or what? Uh, when do you blog? There, there's a snapshot. I was talking about that before. There's Jeff Garrity's log. Um, uh, it, it, you can do this as much or as little. You know, there, there's no. It's obviously no time constraints uh, or requirements here for what you do. Um, there, there are guidelines if you're going for a certificate application, there are guidelines about how, how much detail or content you, you should put into a log note. And we have forms to sort of guide you um, through that process. Uh, so think about that or look into that if you're going for the certificates. But uh, you, again, it's up to you. Uh, I, I know sort of things there. I put everything that's sort of astronomy related or uh, to do with science or cosmology, that, that will go into my blog. So it's my observing notes, my 
uh, in things I'm interested in about space flight and if there's an interesting article about cosmology, say string theory or something like that, um, I'll often refer to those. So it for me, it's sometimes busy. Sometimes I'm doing a couple of posts a day and sometimes I don't touch it for a couple of weeks. So it's re really up to, up to you. Now cost. Um, a lot of the things that I'm suggesting here can be done for free. Yay. <laughs> so uh, you can have a blog site for free. You can use some of the imaging sites for free, although there may be restrictions as to the number of photos you can load up uh, or put online or the quality of those photos, how big they can be or how long a video can be. There's only so much usually you get with a free account. Um, it, you can spend some money and and get expanded services and then you could do more so that that's pretty cool arguably though if you think back to the old days i i used to shoot a lot of film and slide and and then get those processed and so on so there's the bulk stock that you would buy and then you get it processed and and i started sharing my photos or setting up to share photos so in general i would run duplicates of all my photographs when I had it at the lab for reproduction or, or uh, uh, getting the, I don't know, three by five prints or whatever. I, I just tell them do duplicates or triplicates. And then I would give those away to people. Um, so, so I, back then I was sharing even with paper, paper photos and there was a lot of cost associated with that. The, the physical print that I was giving away had a certain you know, small cost associated with it. So you can spend a little bit of money. I'm not trying to spend a lot here of your money, um, but uh, you can do this uh, for free or very inexpensively, I think. And where, where can you do this or what tools can you use to do this? There are a lot, there are a lot of tools. Uh, so, so I don't, I don't have any, um, uh, you know, head and shoulders favorite above others. I think uh, I'll give you some suggestions for the really common ones, and then you should have a look or evaluate and see if you like them, and maybe talk to some other people that use use those services and see see what they think. Um, but it's a it's a huge field. There are many many choices um, here, but I'll I'll feature just a few um, of them. And uh, uh, in the chat, you. I am curious what other people are using. You could type in what tools or services you're using. So on the YouTube chat channel, uh, feel free to um, to make some notes there. I'm, I'm curious what everybody's sort of using. So here we go. Google Photos, you can use to put uh, uh, your images and video uh, online. In fact, you can put unlimited photos and unlimited number of videos online. They are uh, restricted though, in terms of their size. There's maximum uh, megapixel limits for the photos and ma maximum uh, uh, depth, uh, uh, pixel depth for the videos. But uh, essentially it's unlimited. You could have all of your photo library online. And there's some neat features about Google Photos. There's automatic syncing. Uh, I personally don't know if I like that. I usually turn that off, uh, but you can sync things automatically. Um, it's got some smart organizational or, or pattern recognition things that might be creepy, but it, it can find all the people, it can find all the pets in your photos. Uh, there are controls so that you can share things with friends and family and maybe not to the whole public. So it's pretty, pretty neat. And there's a snapshot of my Google Photos, just some pictures I took while I was up at the Car Astronomical Observatory a few years ago. And uh, you can see they're sort of collected uh, by date um, there. So a little little sort of gallery. And, and you know, they're nicely sized and you can click on them, zooms into them, blah, blah, blah. U usual things that you would sort of expect. Um, so, but I, I, again, I don't sort of use that per se. I've dabbled with a little bit. Um, and it seems okay, but it's not sort of knocking me over in terms of its uh, uh, capabilities. Uh, if you're uh, using Apple products, you have iCloud, you have a certain amount of space. Uh, Peter Visma, um, I know he uses this. I think if I understand correctly, you get five gigabytes of space for free with that. Now that's not a lot these days. Again, 
we had higher resolution cameras and, and bigger, bigger sort of photos available. Uh, but you can store in it photos, videos, documents, everything. In fact, you can put everything in iCloud. And of course, Apple tries to make it easy by synchronizing everything to every device. Um, again, there are controls whereby you can restrict who, who can see certain things so you can make things available for friends and family only. So iCloud's out there, that's available. That's a good good sort of product. And it, you might just get that for free if you have uh, some Apple products. Uh, Flickr, I've used this for a number of years. Some of our members use it a lot. Michael Watson, Brian Zarnick, Ian Donaldson, many other raspers use, use Flickr. And it, in general, it's pretty good. And you can put a thousand high resolution photos online and some HD video uh, advertisements may show with those. A uh, lot of the photo tools support tagging and commenting. So tagging is really good for organizational purposes. Comments is nice. You can get some feedback um, on things. Flickr has very good permission controls and copyright controls. Uh, and, and they say they want to Help, help you share photos with people that matter in your life. So, so this, is, this is just sort of what they do. Uh, I, I've used the service a bit. I had a pro account for a, a, a year or so. Um, but uh, again, I, I don't sort of use that very heavily. And I, I get confused by the organizational mechanism um, with it, but uh, it's a good, good service. Uh, Smug Mug is aimed a bit more at the, the pro-am, the professional photographer, where you can put a photo online and high quality versions can be downloaded and purchased by viewers. So, so that's sort of nice. Now you can try it out for free. Uh, they have easily uh, easy uploading options. You get unlimited storage. One of the things I like about it is you can control the skin or the background. Black backgrounds seem to work really well, or dark mode seems to work really well for astro photographs. So that's sort of nice. That's good. Um, and, and if you do buy a plan, the base, basic plan starts at um, around 50 bucks US. So it's not super, super expensive. That, that's an annual fee. Uh, Lynn Hilborn uses this. That's his website that I'm showing there. Of course, he, he does great photography. Um, so smug mug, good, good option um, available. And again, you might be able to sell some photos and then make, make back your money for the, the service fee. Uh, 500 pixels is another service. Uh, I do have an addendum to this. I understand that this was recently purchased by a, a company overseas or in the Far East. And apparently some people are running into uh, copyright issues or permission issues and stuff like that. So if you want to use this service, I would recommend you give this a, a hard look and see what people are saying um, uh, uh, about this. But uh, historically, I know a number of members that have used this, including Alan Dyer. So it uh, once again, it's competitively priced against uh, SmugMug, unlimited storage tagging capabilities, they, they did have good privacy and sharing controls, but maybe some of those have been broken or there are some violations going on. Um, they also have analytic tools, again, to help out the professional photographer that they're, you know, you can do things like set up a portfolio, a professional photographer um, could, could do that when they're trying to showcase the work. Um, so it's uh, very much aimed at pros and, and artists and customizable profiles are available in that as well. But this is the one I really wanted you to know about. Did you know that there's an astrophotography website by astronomers for astronomers? It's specifically for astrophotographs. And you can use this for free. It does, you can get additional services unlocked um, with a fee. It, they support high resolution formats and they support raw formats. You can put um, your raw camera image files, high quality files online. Again, a black background, so things look good. Um, here it's, a, it's got a comment system um, and you can get feedback. Um, 
I've just dabbled with this. I've had an account for years. I've put a couple of photos online, but I haven't put enough stuff in to the system where it's unlocked the comment capabilities. I can't comment on other people's photos. I haven't done enough of my own work yet. Steve McKinney uses this. Dave Brody uses this. Uh, and another neat thing about Astrobin is that it prompts you for all of the the imaging particulars. So the camera that you use, filters, uh, reducers, the imaging train, so the telescope, the focal length, the F ratio, all that sort of technical stuff is prompted for. You don't have to enter that, but if you do, now you have a very detailed record for your own reference to go back to, oh, I need to get more data for this object. What was the field size? Uh, but it's also helpful to other photographers who are trying to go, wow, that's really good. How did they do that? Um, I'm going to use those settings for my project as a starting point. So that, that's really nice that all that information is uh, visible and can be exposed. So Astro Bin is an amazing product and it's specifically tuned for astrophotographers. So if you want to get your astro photos online, this is a great resource to use and, it, and clearly it's purpose built. All right, what about your words? If you have words that you want to share, you want to put logs online, product uh, reviews, uh, tips and tricks online, things like that, probably the number one blogging tool on the planet is WordPress. And that can be used in a couple of different ways. You can use it independently. It may be available as a plugin for your website if you have web services. Uh, it's pretty easy to use. I would argue that posting on a blog site is no more difficult than writing an email. You, you create a post, you put a subject line on it, you put some comment in it uh, or notes, your, your text in it. Uh, you, you usually have some formatting controls. You can have bulleted lists. You can change the font, um, bold italic underline if, if relevant. You can do all that and, and, uh, and then add a picture, like adding an attachment to an email. Really, really easy um, to do. Uh, WordPress has lots of themes, so you can change sort of the style or look or feel um, to, to the page. And you can activate comments so people can comment on articles or on photos that you've put there. So lot, lots of sort of good stuff. Um, I created a WordPress, a, a WordPress account. I created a Blogger one. I tried each one for a little while, and I settled on Blogger. But they're, they're very, very similar. I don't think one is, you know, vastly better than, than the other. That's a, a website that was created uh, by Risa Horowitz for her imaging Saturn project um, or multi-year project. There's my a snapshot from my webpage, although uh, that's an old sort of article back in 2015. Uh, but I, again, I settled on Blogger. It just it felt a little bit better um, to me. Again, really easy to use. Uh, they recently changed the interface, so it, I'm getting used to that. But but it's it, actually putting pictures in the blog now is easier than it was before. Um, so that's kind of good. There's other things I don't like, but but it's a pretty good. Um, again, you can use it for free. Uh, I think WordPress does this, but certainly Blogger does this, that when I put a photo in an article, it automatically does thumbnailing. That means it makes a small version of it. But when you click on the small version, it expands out to a large version. So that's automatic thumbnailing. That's great. That's super easy um, to use. You can you can use themes. I took a theme and then I customized it. I wanted a very particular color palette. Um, now I know sort of how to do programming, so I was able to do that. This is a Google product, so there's lots of interconnectivity um, with, with this. Um, I've activated the comments, so some people look at my blog and put some comments on some posts, and I use tagging quite heavily. So you can do cross-referencing, you can look up something by a topic, like uh, you can choose the make of a telescope, or you can choose the uh, word Messier, and you'll see all my posts that have to do with Messier objects. So I, I really like Blogger. And, and for me, again, I, I said this before, but I'll reiterate it, that I actually put all my astro photos in my blog. Uh, so everything is there. 
and I have my tips and tricks there. I have my photo, my articles, my product reviews, my observations, my detailed observation notes from a, a session, be it a visual observing session or a photography session, tips, discoveries, watch outs, guidelines, quick reference guides, all of that's in my blog. For me, it's one-stop shopping. And I created this because I wanted to have my log notes with me. I didn't want them in an individual computer that might go missing or be left at home. I wanted the log notes online. I wasn't worried that they had to be restricted or people couldn't see them. I didn't really care about that. I wasn't necessarily wanting to soapbox or get on a platform. I just went, if I put my log notes in Blogger, I'll be able to get to them anywhere when I'm at the observing location up north, when I'm in my backyard, when I'm at a friend's place observing, when I'm camping. Uh, I, that was the core idea that drove me to this. I wanted my log notes available no matter where I went. Okay, let me just uh, wind down here. There are lots of other tools. I've only touched on a couple um, uh, here. So, you know, lots of other imaging tools are available and there's tools for building websites. Uh, and, and they all make it pretty easy. You don't have to have a programming background or programming experience. Um, so, so that's good. And, and so I'm encouraging you to share your work and maybe share words, your thoughts and observations and discoveries and your watch outs and tips and tricks about software and stuff like that. Um, and that, again, that's a little bit of me plugging that, uh, you know, I encourage you to, to, put this stuff online. Um, and, and some people might feel really self-conscious about that, not want to do that, but but I I, I, I would suggest you, you sort of think it, sort of look at it big picture. You, you're already sharing with fellow astronomers and you're sharing with me when we get together, your observations, your photos and stuff like that. So just, just do it online um, and then I can check it out and your friends can check it out and astronomers can check it out and club members can check it out anywhere, anytime. You might use this proactively for learning to see your progression and to improve and to, to uh, progress um, through, through difficult sort of processes, especially stuff like astral photography, which is very, very challenging and, and requires a lot of skills, a lot of patience. So. So it's neat being able to go back and see where you were then and where you're at now. And again, because we can't get together, I think it's really sort of important. So thanks for your time. And uh, I, I want to thank RASC members for directly and indirectly sharing their stuff. I stole a few screen snapshots there. And I'm grateful for Blogger letting me uh, use the tool as much as I have. Um, it's, uh, it's still kind of amazing to me, all of the material um, that I have there. And, um, <laughs> and I think sort of a funny little anecdote here. I thank um, Sky and Telescope because they, they must have done a Google search and they were looking for photos of double stars in a particular constellation. And they found my blog and they contacted me and said, can we buy one of your photos? So. Uh, I got a small fee for that and it paid for one year of my <laughs> hosting services. I, I forgot to mention that for uh, blogging sites, you can uh, connect a uh, domain name to that. So the lumpy darkness that I have, I bought that, I pay for that once a year. That's domain name fees and that varies, but maybe roughly $25, $35 a year for that. Um, you don't have to do that, um, but if you want some branding or identification, there's a small fee associated with that. And again, that that paid photo paid for a year of that, so that, that was kind of nice. So you, and that's another thing maybe um, that you might be interested in. You could get discovered perhaps um, through sharing things publicly or online. Um, so uh, I don't I don't know how long I've run. If there's time for questions. Um, here, uh, if you want to ask me questions after the fact, there's my address. I morphed it a little bit, you can see, but feel free to uh, reach out to me. I can take questions afterwards if you have questions about specific products or about Blogger in detail. 
Um, and again, a bit of a shameless promotion. If you go to blog.lumbydarkness.com, um, you'll find uh, all, all my photos, all my log notes, and, and so on. So thank you. Thank you, Blake, for a detailed presentation. Um, you have lots of great ideas on how to share photos and observations online. But I'd like to make a comment uh, before we go to questions. Um, if you happen to be a blogger about uh, people other than yourself, please keep in mind their privacy. Um, if you're posting their photos or things about them, please get their permission because some people just don't like you doing that. Yeah, so that's a that's a really good point. Um, you know, we're not doing it very much right now, doing public star parties and stuff like that. But uh, historically in the past, when we're doing a, a public event, maybe somebody is shooting photos at that. And and uh, we if we put those photos in a public space, then we might um, uh, be making some people upset um, there. We, we need to be particularly sensitive with children. Um, if there's kids in the background of your photos or stuff like that, you, you, you got to be careful. Uh, if there was a pro photographer from a news agency taking photos at a public event, um, they would be getting people's names and getting their permissions and stuff like that. So you could do that if you wanted. That's, that's a lot of legwork. Um, so so uh, a simple thing to do is that you fuzz out people or you just simply don't share photos uh, of people, you know, obvious face shots and, and stuff like that. And, and words that you put on to a blog, you, you want to be careful, nothing defamatory or offensive or, or stuff like that. So yeah, be careful with your pictures, be careful with words in general, you want to get permissions. Um, I use people's photos um, from time to time, so I'll contact the author and ask them if I can use the photo on my blog. Uh, yes, yes, uh, just get the permission, that should be okay. So well, let's go to... Um... Uh, online questions. One question that has just come up is about your blog's address, um, which is blog.lumpydarkness.com. Uh, correct. Um, so it, it's there listed on the slide, blog.lumpydarkness.com. Um, you need to be a little bit careful with that address. You can't just type lumpydarkness.com. Uh, that won't end up at the right spot, uh, it, or it's a blank page or something like that. So you need the blog in front of it, blog lumpydarkness.com. That's just how that one works uh, there, but you can check out my site. Again, tooting my own horn here, but you can see all my articles. I've got over 10,000 articles um, that I've posted in that. I've been using this for over 10 years. Um, so there's quite a lot of information. And again, I keep all my photos there, um, photos that I actively take in a particular evening. I put, put all those there. Um, so that's great. Uh, I, I forgot to mention something that um, the uh, some of the information that you might be sharing, uh, say, say you have something like a technical guide um, or a quick reference guide or a workflow for uh, astrophotography processing or something like that. The, these might be things that you want to be available sort of forever. Um, they, they, uh, will persist for a long period of time or be relevant for a long period of time. If you put things in a blog, you know, it's uh, time-based. Uh, the, the new things show up at the top and the old things fall off. Uh, so that can be a little challenging there if somebody's trying to find something. Now, the tools like uh, Blogger and uh, WordPress, they have evergreen features, so you can activate that, use evergreen sort of articles. Now, I because I know sort of web page programming and web page design. I just created a whole separate sort of site, a companion site for that. But I, I have a lot of evergreen content that just persists. It's around forever. Um, uh, that, that's a that's a way to deal with, with that. So if you have things that have value over time, you want it sort of permanent, you can use evergreen features or maybe a separate web, website or web page um, to, to do that. Uh, any more questions? No, I don't see any more questions at the moment, but uh, I do have one myself. Do you have any guidelines on picking blogs in terms of licensing of your images? Uh, yeah, so the I know that some of our RASP members have uh, found their photos in other uh, places. Uh, you know, you'll recognize your work 
And there's been instances where maybe another website or an electronic magazine, an e-zine or a, a paper magazine has used some of your material or images without your permission. Um, so that that's a concern that some people have. I know that's serious. Uh, so this is tricky. I'm, I'm, you know, on one hand, I'm encouraging you to share and publish stuff and put things on blogs and put things in social websites, but that might make it, we're kind of putting ourselves in harm's way. It makes it really easy maybe for people to take stuff. So you want to look at the sort of permissions and restrictions and controls that are available in a particular tool, but there, there's other things that you can do. Again, I know people are sensitive to this. Flickr has really good, powerful controls to, for example, block uh, or prevent downloading, but people can, it's so easy to take a screen snapshot um, of, of something. So we're betwixt in between in some respects. I'm encouraging you to share your photos, but here, here's one trick. Don't, don't put online the highest resolution photo or don't put online a photo that is of print quality. Um, you use lower resolution photos. And uh, that, then if people are interested, you know, somebody like a magazine contacts you, uh, you, you can provide the high quality photo for print media. We need 1200 dots per inch or more when, when we're printing. But if you do a, a slightly lower quality photo, you can maybe control that or manage that. Flickr and SmugMug, they have built-in mechanisms for, for stuff like that. Um, so, so again, have a look at those sort of features. And that, that reminds me of another thing. And maybe, maybe uh, people aren't really sort of clear about this and how it works, but you, you might want to spend a little bit of time learning about or understanding how copyright works. I don't know if you know this, but it's, it's very clear in the Western world. Uh, it, and you can visit the Canadian uh, appropriate agency uh, website uh, but, but the bottom line is when you create something, when you write some words, when you create an artistic piece, when you shoot a photograph, any photograph, terrestrial or astral photograph, you have copyright. Boom. Done. You have copyright immediately. And if you have the original files, you have the original materials, you could prove that you're the originator of that. Now that might not be trivial or easy, uh, but but that that's the way copyright law works in, in Canada and most of the Western world. You create something, boom, you have copyright. And you don't need the little C with the circle around it and a date and your name beside that. You don't need that. You have copyright no matter how it's sort of presented. So if I understand this correctly, it, you're sort of good to go. Now, it, it's easy to do that last little bit. Lots of people do that. Uh, if you're a bit concerned about this, that's one sort of measure that you can take. Put, put a frame around your image, put a nice sort of frame around it, um, uh, put your name on it, put your name in the image, and, and put the copyright with the C in the circle and put the date and all rights reserved, say stuff like that. and. That's a again one step that you can take um, to to uh, help uh, in managing the permissions of your material. Um, there's a technical thing that you can do. Let's see if I can get this word right. Um, steganography. Steganography. <laughs> Sorry, I butchered that word. But that's where you hide things in plain sight. So look into that. There's ways that you could embed things inside your photos that later you could extract and prove that it's your work. So there, there are a number of things that you can do to, to sort of try and manage this, control the permissions and, and so on. Um, so low quality images, put a copyright on it, put your name on it, um, use a lower res uh, uh, photo online, not the super duper high quality one. And uh, th those are good measures that you can take. And if you do find something um, that's been taken, just nicely ask that other party, please take that down, stop doing that. Or I, I will 
uh, have my lawyer contact you. <laughs> so uh, th those are things that, that you can do. So I hope that helps. Hope I've been able to, to show you lots of resources and tools where you can share your photos. Um, again, a great site is Ask Bin, and that you can share words on WordPress or Blogger uh, to, to share your stuff with us. And again, me personally, I'm encouraged by that. I hope that um, I can see what you're doing, uh, see what you're working on. So uh, thanks for your time. Thanks, Blake. I think that's it for the questions. Um, but really appreciate the time you put into your presentation. Really excellent. Thank you.